Hi everyone, Angela here. Print out all the pieces for this tie back cap and then check the one inch square on each page. Use paper scissors or a blade to cut out each pattern piece and cut on the inside of the black lines. Cut all the notches on the pattern pieces an eighth of an inch long. Also cut the top corner on pattern piece C. Use tape to join pieces C, D and E together. Links for all the tools I use in this PDF pattern can be found in the description below. I'm using a cotton chambray fabric for this project as it's soft and lightweight. You can also use other cottons, cotton blends or linen. Fold the fabric along the lengthwise grain and then place the pattern on the fold as marked and then cut out. Near the center it says cut up to this notch, open the fabric at the bottom, cut along the fold to that mark. Cut the small notches below it, the top corner and then all the notches around the other side. What you have now is a triangle showing you the center and then the notches on either side. I'll just mark the notches with white chalk so you can see. Cut out two pieces for the brim and then cut out the notches in the center. To make the brim stiff, I'm using a heavyweight non-woven fusible interfacing with the glue dots on one side. Cut two of pattern piece B. Follow the grain line if you're using woven interfacing. Place the glue side onto the wrong side of the fabric, matching the center notches and the inner edge. Steam press together, repeat for the other pieces, then place right sides together and clip all around the outer curve. I'm using a Brother NV50S sewing machine. The link for this and the tools I use are in the description below. Make sure to use coupon code NOTCHESNV50S for the special offer. Stitch around this outer edge just to the right of the interfacing, back tacking at the start and finish. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on all notifications and leave a comment below. I'm using my 6 inch Kai embroidery scissors to cut away half of the seam allowance, leaving about an eighth of an inch. Turn it right side out, and then I'm using my harem marker to push out the curve. You can also use a knitting needle or a point turner to do this. Then give the edge a press. Starting from the center notch, we'll stitch around and then finish at the notch. No need to back tack, stitch close to the edge, stop quarter of an inch from the end, have your needle down, lift your foot and pivot, then carefully sew a quarter inch top stitch all around. Stop close to the edge, pivot, and then finish at the notch. Trim away the seams at the corners. With the right side of the fabric facing you, match the two notches to the right of that center triangle, then fold it so that the pleated fabric on the back is facing towards the center. Make sure the top edges line up and then pin it in place. Move over to the next two notches, match them up and fold in the same direction. The fold on the back here should match up with the fold on the front. Again, make sure the top edges match and pin in place. Repeat for the next two pleats, and then the last pleat is a little bit smaller so the back fold will not line up with the front fold. Now repeat on the other side, but fold the pleats in the opposite direction, again with the back folds facing towards the center. You should have 10 pleats all together. Carefully edge stitch across the pleats to hold them in place. Once done, just check on the back that everything is sitting nice and flat. The top side of the brim will have the nicer looking top stitching than the underside. Place this top side of the brim together with the right side of the pleats. Match the center notches and clip in place, and then on each side, match the edge of the brim together with the last pleat and clip in place. If you need to, clip the rest of the brim in place. Use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to stitch the brim onto the cap. Back tack at the start and finish, making sure to catch the edge of the brim. Mm -hmm. 
Next we'll be zigzagging on the right side of the fabric an inch below the notches from here to here and from here around to here. Select the zigzag stitch number 7, the stitch length at 2.5 and the width at 7. Of course if you have a serger or an overlocker use that instead. Fold the ends of the ties with right sides together and clip in place. Switch back to a straight stitch and then starting from the notch use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, back tack and stitch down. When you get to the start of the curve continue stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance, back tack to finish and then repeat with the other side. Carefully clip the corners and turn right side out. Use a knitting needle or a point turner to poke out the corner and the edges. Adjust the seam so that it's right in the center and then give the tie ends a press. On each side, fold and press up 3 8 of an inch between the brim and the tie. On the back, press up 3 8 of an inch from the tie to nothing in the center. On the top side, we'll be starting here with a top stitch going all around and stopping here. Inside the back, we'll stitch from here up to there and finish here. On the back, starting and finishing with a back tack, stitch along the edge of the zigzag. Fold the center back in half with right sides together, matching the folded edges. We'll stitch a dart from here down to the fold. Back tack about half an inch above the point and then stitch straight down about 2 inches and then back tack to finish. Turn over to the right side and starting from here back tack and sew a quarter inch top stitch. Pull the brim and the pleats taut as you top stitch over them. To reinforce this opening back tack across from the edge to the top stitching. Pivot, continue stitching quarter of an inch from the edge back tack at the end and repeat for the other side. Check that the top stitching has caught the edges on the underside. I'll have another version of this hat without the ties coming out soon. Thanks again for watching, take care and happy sewing!